Hi. I want to talk to you about a recent article that appeared in the journal Nature Neuroscience. And the article talked about research that was done to determine whether or not uh, a family's income had anything to do with the size of the surface area of the brain of their children. And they studied 1,100 kids between the ages of 3 and 20. And they looked at the surface area of their brains and compared it to the family income, the level of money that that family made. And the results that they found were truly alarming. And that is that children of low socioeconomic status have significantly reduced surface areas of their brains. The parts of the brains responsible for advanced thinking, for communication, for language, for doing a math problem, for impulse control, were smaller in kids that had less money in their families. And the kids of the upper class, those that had more money, reached what we could probably call their full potential as far as brain size and functionality goes. And we know that because once you reached a certain plateau, the brain size didn't increase anymore, but it did increase incrementally with the amount of money the family made up until they reached a point where it just plateaued. And then, adding more money to the family saw no increase in brain size. But a very interesting thing happened with the kids who were most low socioeconomic status. Because as there were incremental increases in the amount of money that a family earned or had, in the very low end of the spectrum financially, we saw significant increases in those kids' surface area of their brains. So money is much better spent on kids who are low income than kids who are at high income. So what we need to really talk about is what the implications are for policy here. First, two things. Kids are not any, in any way, shape, or form uh, playing on an equal playing field. So telling a kid who's low so socioeconomic status, well, all you have to do is study hard, do your homework, buckle down, and you can succeed, that's complete folly because their brains don't function and work as well as the kids who are wealthier, who are rich. Uh, it doesn't mean they can't achieve because they can and they do, but they've got to work much, much harder to do the same type of computations or processing of language that kids who are wealthy can do much more easier. That's the first thing. And the second thing that's an implication for practice and for what we need to look at as far as policy goes is that obviously spending more money with the families that are low income brings much uh, more uh, read readily understandable and better results. In other words, when we distribute money to the richest families, there is no benefit to society. Those kids are already okay. But when we distribute that money to the lower income, there is a significant increase in the surface area of their brains. And again, that makes it easier for them to learn, that makes it easier for them to socialize, easier for them to control their behaviors and succeed. And we know those things are so important when it comes to making it in school and eventually to having a successful life and a successful career. We need to redistribute money. Right now, unfortunately, the money is being redistributed and it's coming from the lowest echelon of low socioeconomic status Americans and the middle and working classes and it's being sucked up into the top 1%. And that's where we've been, where the 1% has exponentially increased its wealth even since the crash of 2008. Meanwhile, middle class wages have remained flat and poverty has increased. We need to reverse that trend. We need to reverse that redistribution. We need to re-redistribute that money back into the hands of the working poor and the poor where it's actually going to do some good. Thanks. Good night.